Hi everyone, this is Joel over at Nyabi Zoo, and I'd like to welcome you all to Earth Week. As we celebrate the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, we just want to provide you another opportunity to come to appreciate this wonderful planet that we call home. Now, if we were to journey out into the forest, uh, we would actually see a wide variety of things happening in the world right now, uh, because the springtime uh, brings a lot of different things that we would truly appreciate, such as spring forest flowers. Now these little forest flowers that, that we might get to see uh, normally aren't around for very long. So if we are to consider going out into the forest, uh, we would see lots of different things. Um, we might just look up into the trees and you know see the leaves blowing in the wind or uh, see animals moving among the branches, but we often forget to look down to actually explore the forest floor itself. And if we did, we might see uh, different things like animal trails on the ground. We might see uh, burrows that animals have dug, um, but we also might see these uh, little flowers these tiny little beautiful flowers poking out from the forest floor. Now these lovely little flowers are called ephemerals. Now if you've never heard of an ephemeral, uh, these are uh, a type of flower that would have a very short growing season, uh, really only about 40 to 60 days, and they begin growing right after the snow melts and then they complete their life cycle around the time that the leaves start coming out on the trees, kind of like right now. Uh, so why should we even care about these little flowers? Although they're small, these little flowers perform a very integral role in our woodland systems. Uh, they're an important primary food source for our early pollinators and other insects that are emerging from uh, hibernation, where they've been living under the leaf matter and uh, down in the ground, uh, and they aid in nutrient cycling within our woodland community. Now the presence of a wide diversity of these spring ephemerals may also indicate the health of a forest. So like healthy forest means that we would have lots of native spring wildflowers. Now at the uh, Rock Island County Forest Reserve District and all of uh, the parks that we have and at the Nyabi Zoo, we come across a lot of these native uh, spring ephemerals. And so we've taken a bunch of pictures of those that we'd like to share with you and give a little description of what it is that you might see and how to identify these uh, common native spring ephemerals. Uh, so the first one is spring beauty. This is a pretty common flower we would see. Uh, it has a pair of green to reddish purple long linear leaves. Uh, the single stem with a grouping of floppy flowers uh, can range from white to light purple with darker stripes down each petal. Now, as I mentioned, this is a common flower, but if it's not present in your forest, it can actually indicate that the land has been subjected to severe disturbance in the past, and maybe that's why they're not there. Next, we have the Dutchman's breeches. Now, uh, le these have leaflets with very uh, heavily feathered appearances. So like if you look at the leaves, they look like feathers. Uh, and the little tower of flowers uh, that we see on the Dutchman's breeches have two to six pairs of white flowers on a long stalk. Uh, sometimes they might appear a little bit yellow. Uh, and these flowers, uh, they look like upside down pairs of pants. So breeches are another word for pants. And so it looks like a bunch of upside down pairs of pants hanging on the flower. Uh, next, we have the cutleaf toothwort. Now, these have a whorl of three palmate shaped leaves. Now, palmate, it's shaped like the palm of your hand. So it's kind of like when your fingers are spread out. Uh, and these leaves have three to five lobes, each with uh, teeth along the edges. So we look at the pictures here, see all those little jagged edges, we call those teeth. Uh, and that has one flowering stalk uh, with a floppy white to light purple flower. Next, we have the rue anemone. Now, this is not the kind of anemone we would find on the ocean floor. Instead, we find this on the forest floor. Uh, it has compound leaves. It has three leaflets per petiole, uh, which is its leaf stalk. And each leaflet can range from green to reddish purple. And it contains three lobes. Now, these leaves also kind of look like a duck's foot. So if you look at this picture and you say, hey, I, I get it. It looks like a duck's foot. There you go, that's the rue anemone. Uh, and each stalk terminates at uh, one to five white or pinkish flowers with six to nine petals, even though botanists would say that those aren't true petals. But when the amateur looks at them, definitely they look like petals to us, but it has six to nine of those petals. Uh, and then we have the false rue anemone. Uh, this is similar to the rue anemone, but also to the wood anemone. It has compound leaves with three leaflets per petiole. Uh, each leaflet has three deeply separated lobes. Uh, the flowers are white and they occur in groups of one to three, but this flower only has five petals 
again, not true petals, but five petals versus the six to nine of the actual root anemone, which is why this one is the false root anemone. Now we have liver leaf, or what is known as sharp lobed uh, and round lobed hepatica. Uh, these are in the buttercup family, and uh, they may not actually even have leaves, but if they do, uh, they're separated into three lobes, uh, dark, red, brown, and green. Uh, they have a tuft of white to light purple flowers on a long, dark brown, red, green, hairy stalks. Uh, so yes, they do have tiny little, what looks like hairs growing up the stalks there. Now both are very similar, except that the lobes of the round lobed basil leaves are rounded and the sharp lobed are pointed. Next, we have the trout lily. Uh, now, the trout lily, as it indicates, is in the lily family. It has uh, one to two leaves at the base, uh, and they're mottled pale green and brown grayish green in color. Uh, and the flowering stalk uh, has a single flower that droops downward, uh, and that flower can be white or yellow, depending on whether you have the white trout lily or the yellow trout lily. Next are Virginia bluebells. Uh, people love seeing these just because of the burst of color that we would see out in the forest right now. Uh, and these can be up to 12 inches tall. Uh, the leaves themselves can be about seven inches uh, and they're light green and oval in shape. Uh, but each stem ends at a grouping of bell-shaped blue to purple flowers, uh, which gives it its name, the bluebell, because the flowers kind of look like bells and they tend to be colored blue. The may apples, these, uh, a lot of people look, it looks like little uh, cocktail umbrellas <laughs> sticking out of the forest floor. Uh, and as we look at these, uh, each of them have lobed leaves uh, on one or two long green stalks. Uh, and the fertile plants uh, will actually produce a white flower in between the branching stalks of the may apple. Now the blood root, uh, this has leaves only at the bottom of the plant, uh, and they're very wide and they wrap around a single flower stalk. Now that stalk produces a large uh, single white flower. Uh, it has prominent yellow anthers right in the center of that flower, uh, but its name is interesting because the roots, when they break apart, uh, they produce a blood red juice uh, that was historically used for dyes. Therefore, the blood red juice gave it uh, the name of the blood root because you break those roots apart. The prairie trillium. Uh, now this uh, is also in the lily family uh, and it has a single stem with three heavily mottled leaves uh, and has dark and light green patches. Now the leaves surround a single maroon flower with three petals. So if you look at the picture to the right, uh, the lower right, uh, this one is about to bloom. You can see there's a bud right there and it hasn't quite opened up, but when it would, it'd have a maroon flower with three petals. The large flowered bellwort. Uh, now this has two to three stems uh, that branch from a central stem uh, and it has long parallel leaves that surround the stem in an alternate pattern. Uh, each stem terminates at a single bell-shaped flower uh, that has six yellow petals. Now the top of this plant tends to droop down because the, the, the weight of the leaves and the flower are pretty heavy, so you'll see a droopy flower at the top. The violet wood sorrel. Uh, this has a cluster of gray to green purplish leaves on long stalks. Uh, each leaf consists of three triangular leaflets. Uh, the stalks end in a grouping of two to five bell-shaped pale purple flowers, and those flowers have five petals, uh, and they have a greenish to yellow center. Woodland phlox. Uh, the shoots can be uh, over 12 inches tall. Uh, the leaves are tapered and hairy and they occur in pairs. And the stem terminates in a round cluster of flowers. And those flowers have five petals ranging in color from white to blue to purple. Uh, the petal tips can be rounded or notched. And these flowers are very fragrant. They smell really good. Wild geranium. Now, many people may have uh, the red geraniums uh, on their front porch uh, that you could buy at uh, any of your uh, local uh, garden store, uh, but these are native to our area. Uh, they have leaves that are palmate, which if you recall is like the shape of the palm of the hand, uh, and they have five lobes with their serrated edges. Now the leaves and stems are hairy, again with those little hairs on them, uh, and each flower stalk terminates in one to five pink to purple flowers uh, with five petals and light colored veins in those petals. 
the yellow marsh marigold, or the cowslip. Uh, these are in the buttercup family, and they have broad, glossy, heart or kidney-shaped leaves. Uh, they're buttercup-like with yellow flowers, and they tend to grow in big clusters down on the forest floor. The yellow violet. Many people are familiar with violets. Uh, we have two native varieties here that have heart-shaped leaves and serrated edges. Uh, the stalks are covered in fine little hairs. Uh, and those same flower stalks, uh, they end with a single, single yellow flowers. Uh, and each of those have five petals with purple veins, which is kind of cool seeing the contrasting colors of yellow to purple. Now we have other common violet species like the common blue violet, uh, the striped white violet, the Canada violet, uh, which is a flower with a yellow center, and all have these uh, similar heart-shaped leaves uh, and flowers with their five petals. Now it's important to remember that uh, we get outside and relax and enjoy these spring uh, flowers that are coming up through the forest floor. Uh, and just remember that as we persist through these very trying times right now, try to take a breath. Just pause and absorb your surroundings. And, and doing that, of course, out in the forest is so much better. Um, you can enjoy the little things, no matter how small, like these little spring ephemerals. Uh, and be patient with yourself and your family uh, and allow your curiosity to just flourish, you know, to get out there and learn more and, and just be open uh, to learning. Uh, and try something new, perhaps maybe some wildflower spotting uh, and take some pictures and come back to this presentation later and see if uh, you can identify what you found out there. Uh, and just remember this, that sometimes we get so caught up in trying to accomplish something big that we fail to notice the little things that give life its magic. So, you know, on behalf of us here at the Niobe Zoo and our Conservation Education Department, you know, we want to make sure that um, during this Earth Week uh, that all of you are looking to do something uh, to help the Earth, to think about the Earth, uh, and remember that Earth Day is every day. And because, you know, conservation is what we do at the zoo. We want everyone to be conservation minded as they're out there thinking about the earth uh, and looking at ways that we can better connect and appreciate this planet. So thank you very much and uh, join us each day here for our Earth Week presentations and find these videos again uh, after they play uh, on our YouTube channel uh, so that you can go back and compare the spring flowers that you found as you discover these spring ephemerals. Thanks so much everybody, take care and we will see you again soon. Bye now.